My brother and I volunteered at an EMS service called Cypress Creek in North Harris County. I was the first responder coordinator for that service and uh, you know started having discussions about hey I'd like to to have a first responder program at Rice. Uh, so I was talking to folks at Cypress Creek about that and they said well you know that one of our medics is is at Rice and he wants to do the same thing. Got a lot of no's. <laughs> a whole lot of no's from lots of different people. Uh, primarily due to concern about the need and, and the risk involved. Perception is and, and was at the time that Rice was located across the street from the largest medical center in the world. Why would we need to, to have first response? Because ambulances are coming from across the street. Being an insider into EMS systems, I knew that was not the case. They were coming from stations all around town. Uh, and that, you know, anecdotally, it was taking a long time for ambulances to get here, which means a large gap between when the person needs help and, and when they eventually get help. What, what worked uh, to get, get past the hurdles, uh, to overcome those hurdles, uh, was partnering with, with uh, Mary Voswinkel, who was chief of police at the time. She had the data that I needed to prove the need. The, the, the timing was incredible for when we got the program started. I was actually I just graduated from, from Rice when the, the program started its operations. The year before we had started our, our training program. But we started October of, of 1996. And you know, I think the first week that we were in service, we had somebody collapse at the Cohen house. Uh, and one of our EMTs was serving as a waitress there and started CPR immediately, saved the person. That happened to uh, uh, be in front of a Houston City Council member. So there's a you know, huge proclamation and everything, but it brought positive attention to the program. A month later, we had a individual collapse at, at one of the galas that the president was hosting, uh, which you know, had an EMS response and a successful outcome. Uh, so you know, two successes shortly after the program began really helped to solidify the program for the future. And I, I'm incredibly proud of, of the service that has been provided for the past 25 years um, because it's taken dozens and dozens and dozens of people, students, with other things to do, um, other focus. You know, they're not all pre-meds. You know, they have a lot of different interests, but they have that common interest in, in serving the community. And I, I think one of the things which has been most surprising to me is the leadership lessons that people have taken away from the program that they've used in, in their careers, be it medicine or, or something else. Um, and I think that's something that Rice does very well, is it allows students the opportunity to lead. This is fundamentally very different from any other organization that's on campus. And, and they are responsible for, you know, the day-to-day -day is certainly going to be responding to emergencies that are not as time sensitive and critical in nature, but there certainly are those emergencies in which lives are truly at stake and and our students, our membership is taking care of our own community uh, in their time of need at that point. Discussion to EMS, I have a page at South Cerebri for individual cut hand. REMS for me, it's probably the most kind of transformative experience or set of experiences that I've had and it opened up so many different doors. It, it changed me as a person, made me more confident, it made me a better communicator, a better listener, better working with others. It, you know, these skills that I'll, I'll have for the for the rest of my life, I, I hope, and um, it it just opened my eyes to, to medicine, um, what I hope to be doing with the rest of my life, and, and it opened my eyes to kind of big picture how to kind of serve the community how to how to meet the needs of the community as a as a pre-hospital care provider how to meet their needs and listen and work with the community one of the biggest things for me was transitioning from this this emergency medicine technician who could do the skills who could deliver the care versus an emergency medicine supervisor 
who had to go to the calls, not only take good care of patients, but help train others to do so as well. And that's really reflective of what I do now. I, I primarily, I'm at an academic institution. I'm also the vice chair of my, uh, depart in the, my Department of Emergency Medicine, as well as several medical director roles and other roles, uh, Department of Education, Innovation, and Technology at, at Baylor. So I, I have a lot of roles, but the, the core link to all those roles, whether it be what I'm doing now or back then, was that sort of academic supervisor, sort of teacher role. So the, the, not only did we see out, amazing sort of pathology, even from the standpoint of, of college, but we, we also had the chance to take others who were, you know, you take that freshman who just took the EMT course and they're responding to their first first call and the bone stick, not only is the bone sticking out, it's pointing in two different directions and walking them through that, that sort of piece. Um, being in the truck, uh, uh, driving lights and sirens to try to respond to car accidents and other things that have happened around campus as well. It was really, really a transition at that point in my life. Really, really enjoyed it. All of the students, every single one in Rice CMS takes their responsibility so seriously because they know that we're the first people that see patients who call on campus. And it's not only students, it's professors, it's visitors, it's kids who come to campus and you're the first people who go and see these patients in their time of need. EMS, after taking that class, just became such a big part of uh, what I was doing at Rice and how I was giving back to the Rice community. EMS is just, just such a fantastic way for students not only to learn about medicine and learn about kind of practicing medicine out in the field, but also how to give back to the community in a really meaningful way. Anything else you'd like from us at all? That should be it. Okay, great. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. So cool. No, no worries. <laughs> One of the, uh, the quotes I love to use is, uh, I believe it's Maya Angelou. She says something to the effect of, uh, people won't always remember uh, what you say or what you did, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. Right? And so I remember my feelings. I remember being there to help students out at their, their worst moments, at least for their lives, for what was going on in their worst moments. And then seeing them later, right, at lunch, or seeing them in a class and them saying thank you. I remember, I very specifically remember trying to explain what we did with Rice EMS to professors, telling them, hey, not only am I in the back with my radio on, but I may run out of the class at any point in time, right? Some of them were very receptive to them, some of them were like, mm, that's weird, what are you doing, right? And, and, and then later seeing some of their faces when they saw us in action and said, I get it, right? And so I don't necessarily have that one story or that one patient, but I do have those feelings, not only of impacting people, but when they've been able to come back and, and tell me thank you, and I'm just humbled to be able to have that part and service at, at Rice University and as part of uh, Rice EMS.